Hi, it's Fiona Hooper here again, and I'm back with another weekly instalment of my live show, The Poetry of Painting. It's just a quick reminder again, before we get into the poetry, about our forthcoming Blooms Online Art Exhibition, which is taking place this coming weekend on Friday the 18th and Saturday 19th of June. There'll be 10 of us professional artists from around the globe and as well as seeing our artwork, you'll be able to chat with us in an informal, relaxed atmosphere, ask questions, get to know us, and even buy something if you find a special piece that you really like. Uh, the tickets are free, and you can book them via the link on the events page of my website, which is www.fionahooper.com. So this week on my show, I'm really pleased to welcome back the Scottish poet, Martin Goldie. So, Martin. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Fiona. Welcome really back. back. Thank you. It's lovely to have you back. So, uh, tell us a bit what you've been up to, just briefly, and we'll, we'll get into more detail later, but have you been writing much poetry recently? Uh, um, Writing a wee bit, I, I recently submitted a poem to the local Rotary Club's a poetry competition and I learned on Wednesday that, that, that it had been one of the prize winners, so I was quite yeah. pleased about that. Excellent, yeah. that's really well done and congratulations. Thank you. Thank must you. be thrilled. Yeah, I was delighted, yeah. thrilled. It was a, I'd, I'd only learned on Wednesday and the the prize giving was on the Saturday, and unfortunately, I couldn't make the prize giving. But oh. it was nice to it was nice to get the, the, the recognition for the poet, the poem absolutely. that I submitted. So it was quite oh, that's good. absolutely brilliant! Well done, yeah. well done. Thank you, thank you. Well, I know you've written at least one other poem as well, because um, you made sure to reserve my painting Sea Green as your inspiration for a return to my show. That's so, correct. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to hearing that. And uh, as the name suggests, I'll put the picture up on the screen. Um, sea green is another seascape and um, it's oil on canvas, 30 by 30 centimetres. So I'm just really looking forward to hearing what you made of it, Martin. So would you like to read it for us now? Absolutely, I hope you like it. Sea green. In that moment, the world stood still. Sea green sea with sky converged. No mountain view to favour. No wind blown splash of salty sea to savour. And as I stood on lichened rocks above an off deserted beach, I felt the gentlest touch of soft warm breeze on tingling skin. And in that silence, soaring high in salty air, a startled eagle crying to the sky, fled in land to sheltered crags. From my rock, smoothed by endless wind and tide, on the edge of this wild land's end, immersed in that elusive slow time we surely need. I gazed across that calm, verescent sea where a winter storm's swirling snows released from purple, lowering clouds float to earth from starless skies, land and melt on snow-white sands that glisten bright between the mahir and the swell, where sky's black, ragged, ancient form is risen from a shimmering sea where doughty sea dogs, home from epic winter journeys, a blaze of feather free and high, joyous in their azure space, dive with steel to pierce the minch. In that quiet moment of perfection, in the moist, briny air, and like that hungry raptor, I felt the slightest stir Sense the brewing storm's icy breath creep slowly from the west. Watched dark clouds blown from wild Atlantic seas consume the massive sky. 
bar the light which pours like liquid gold from that vast expanse of space beyond the darkening skies. As the storm's gloom gathered and cast its bleak chill shadow upon the land and sea about me, in that fast receding light, I felt once more the random splash of salty sea refresh this aged weathered face. And in that ocean's demented tempest, livid lime seas frothed and splashed, the wild wind wailed, and screaming frenzied waves, sped by wind and ocean's tide, rushed to where this land and sea are marked, where in a thunderous deafening wall of sound, those raging waters crashed upon this land's rocky coves and empty pristine whitewashed sands. And when at last the storm blew through, the eagle flew back on the hunt and on the scene quiet fell. In that gorgeous calm, fragmented light like pillars fell, released from that eternal space beyond a broken sky of benign cloud. In a miracle of sorts, those shafts of empyrean light turned that sea green sea cyan blue. Wow, brilliant. Sadly, your internet was just stopping a little bit at times, but I think Thank we you. got all the words. That's amazing, lovely, really good. Oh. Just such a story. I really love that. So, um, Thank you. Mine's, mine's quite short in comparison, but um, and certain similarities, but certainly not the strength of, um, of what you've got in yours. But anyway, I'll read it anyway. So it's um, Sea Green. The silence of the mist dampens all sound while the waves roll on in endless inevitability, their cool greens and blues edged with white, colours to impart a sense of tranquility. The sea fret bestows an atmosphere of mystery, shape-shifting, enveloping, wrapping around us, a damp, cool blanket of translucent moisture rolling in following the rhythm of the waves. Mist formed by warm air over the chill waters, waiting for the breeze that creates the swells and the reclusive sun to dissolve this obscuring veil, to reveal its hidden treasures when the cloud dispels. The fog-bound sea offers no clues to time of day and there will be no stars by which to steer we must rest and wait with enduring patience for this vaporous visitation to begin to clear. That was mine, a little bit short and sweet, but that's, lovely. that's the one. So, um, yeah, I think there's certain similarities in yeah. there, but I think mine's on a much more tranquil day. And yeah. uh, yours has definitely got more of the storm and and you know storm brewing and coming in and the you know the eagles knowing that it's on its way and just yeah. great picture telling you know storytelling in your poem martin i love that thank you, thank you. really good i've yeah. actually got the painting up here in a frame i don't know if you can see that but um yeah you may not be able to see it very well from there but if i move that it's just up there yeah, that looks lovely. Uh, it's a lovely so, painting Thank you. Yeah. I, think po I think your poem as well just brings out the, that sort of sense of sea and sky sort of merging and, mm. you know, so it's, yeah. it's quite nice. Oh, Chris says he's really enjoying the poems again this week. Thanks very much, Chris. Lovely to Thank know you, Chris. Like them. Thank you. Uh, but I, I love the way that yours, what were the words you used where it, the sky and the sea merged? Uh, converge. Convert, yeah. Yes, yeah. It just, you know, like it's it's endless. Where does one stop and where does the other begin? You know, it's just yeah, that's right. Absolutely great. So, uh, uh, one of the things I, so, oh, sorry, oh. sorry, Fiona. No, carry uh, on. I, one of the things about the, the painting that there's there's no landmarks, so it's hmm. it's you know trying to work out where 
it is in your sort of sort of life experience. And uh, th- funnily enough, I, I see that that sort of green, angry sort of sea reminds me of holidays down in, in Cornwall when I was a child. But yeah. in my mind's eye, it's like the northwest of Scotland sort of looking out on to the, the sort of Minch, uh, the yeah. sort of inner Hebrides and the islands there. Yeah. But, uh, but it's it's got that. It could be anywhere. I think it could be anywhere in the British Isles West Coast, mm. which is it's uh, quite good. Yeah. I, sort of yeah I, think I think, yes, I think it can sort of speak to anybody that's been in that coastal situation and yes. seen a sea like that. So, yeah, yeah. That's but, right. Uh, yeah, it was. I love painting it, and um, and I'm loving writing poems about the paintings as well. It's something that's quite new to me. You know, I, I did do, I did write some poetry years ago, but um, not seriously. But uh, I'm just really enjoying this, and and not just writing the poetry, but reading how someone else has interpreted that painting in their poem as well, which is just, you know, it's fascinating to me the differences and the similarities. Yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah. Nice. So, your poem that won the competition, can you tell us a little bit what that was about as well? Because yeah, that yes, sounds absolutely uh, great. Uh, well, I was delighted. It's, uh, it had a bit of local interest. Uh, it's It was basically about a coffin trail that's, that I came across in a, on a walk uh, mm. a few years ago. And uh, I'd got... I'd, I came up a sort of track and came to this sign, Coffin Trail, and it took you mm. off the track onto the rough ground up to a pass uh, between the sort of two hills. And uh, I got to the pass and <laughs> was actually quite breathless and quite tired. And it made me think of just how hard this journey must have been for families taking their loved ones on this uh, sort of last journey. Uh, so they actually carry coffins over this over the mountains? Yes, it's, it's quite common in hilly, hill areas in, in, in Britain uh, mm. where the mother church is, is on one side of the, the, the hill and, fa- and families would have to take their, their old granny or their mother or their father on this horrendous journey oh uh, goodness. to the, uh, to be buried in the in the in the holy ground mm. uh, and that's that's basically what it was about and uh, I was quite pleased but it uh, quite a sobering thought uh, mm. that, that that people 100 200 years ago would have had to endure that sort of journey to to get their their no family member to the church for burial. Mm, uh, mm. I, so that's what it was about, and uh, it was basically just the uh, try, try to convey how difficult a journey that would be physically and mentally. I think mm. for for families. Yes. So it was yes. called West Inverhoolan. The, the the church was in a is in a village in Verhoolan, which is on Loch Striven. Uh, just sort of mm. up from Dunoon, basically, and mm. they would have been walking over from uh, from the, the sort of east over this uh, this pass. So that that mm. was that was the poem. Yeah. Wow! Wow! That's such a story, you know. I mean, just the idea of, of anybody doing that, you know, just when at, at such a a sad time for them anyway yeah um and i guess it would be a a big advantage to have small thin elderly relatives rather than large relatives absolutely (laughs) or be able to afford a horse or Mm. donkey or whatever to to help with the 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 job but uh, most of them i think would have uh, wouldn't have the money to or to have a horse or to hire a horse, so it would have been, it would have been mm. a, a journey with the casket on their shoulders, which would have been mm. quite quite horrendous. But so anyway, I mean, that's what the, that was what yeah. the poem was about. So it had quite wow. a bit of local interest, which would have I think would have helped 
Mm. But, I, but I was quite pleased with the, the outcome of the podium. Yeah. Oh, and just so many congratulations for getting a prize. That is just yeah, amazing. Yeah, thank you. Lovely, because you're still relatively new to poetry, aren't you? Yes. I know you've been writing a long, long time and writing yeah, about the right. walks and, and the area and that, but but the poetry, it's still, was it last year? Do I remember right? Yeah, uh, last mm. October was basically mm. the first poem I wrote. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's from the air. I've, I've been, this is helping, uh, I quite enjoy this sort of format where it gives you a, a focus to, to to think about something and get get mm. a poem down. And if actually I did a poem for a friend based on a, a, a painting he had in his house. Yeah. And it's quite quite a short one, but he was quite pleased with that. So good, he's good. Yeah. So it, it gives you some it gives you a it gives you something to to think about and uh, you know get something down on paper, which is quite mm. good. Mm. I think it's a bit like when you've got that source of inspiration, whether it's um, you know a, a painting or a view or um, a story like that, it it takes away that fear of a blank page, doesn't it? Yeah, because you right. you haven't got a blank page because it's already you know taking shape, and you've just got to get yes. it out. You know, so it's a bit like some people say, oh, when they've got a blank canvas, don't want to start, don't want to risk making a mess of it. Well, I mean. You know, it's a bit like paper. It, it is just what it is, and just go for it. You know, but yeah, that's right. That's right. I think you know, for me with the painting as well, I've always got something in my head as to what I want to do, how I want to interpret it. You know, my inspiration for that. So, in a way, although the canvas is blank to start with, it's not. It's not a blank canvas when I'm starting the painting because it's yeah. You know, the information's up here, like with the poetry. So. Yeah, yeah that's right. I think I heard to you. Yeah, finding all these similarities between painting and poetry as well. Yeah. Yes, I, I heard one of your guests, Marky, talking about that. And I, I think we work in a similar way, and it's, it, it forms in your head. And, mm. uh, you know, you've got ideas, and then you get it down onto paper yeah. or onto computer. And yeah. then from there, it's just a case of. Uh, sort of editing and, and, and honing till you're happy mm. with the, the jumble of words that you've that you've got and hope mm. that it sort of relays the, the the story that you have in the head. Yes. Yeah. I mean I I have to make notes of if I'm thinking of a word or a phrase, I always make notes because I think I'm gonna forget that. I think I'll remember it, but I won't, you know, so I've always got to Aye, that's right. you know, make a note in my phone or something, you know, because it might be late at night or something and I just think no no just make a note in the phone instead of finding pen and paper but um and I know there are some other people who who almost get the whole poem in their head first before they write yeah. anything down and I just think I might forget what I got to start with then so no I have to write it down somehow or other yeah me too so, yeah <laughs> no. but, but it's um I was just thinking it's a a whole fascinating world that I'm dipping into here with the poetry, you know, meeting so many lovely people, so many different characters and the different styles of poetry as well. So some of yours, you've got rhyme and, and some you don't seem to have so much rhyme. So yeah, you know, do, do you have a preference? Well, uh, to be honest, uh, I, I just write in free form, and if it mm. if it rhymes and fits the fits the the part of the poem, I'm quite happy. But I don't get too hung up about rhyme. Mm. Uh, I, I I I'm more interested in the flow of the poem and it conveying the you know the sort of uh, sentiment or the story. Mm. Mm. Uh, I'm trying creating to, an atmosphere like yes, you want tonight. Yes. Create such an yeah, atmosphere. That's right. that, yeah. 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 And it's it, it's funny because no, I find that uh, it's always been taught to me that that you've to use as few words as possible and keep things succinct. And uh, hmm. but I find in poetry sometimes I'll put a, a an and in, and it's just to help with the flow of the the poem. So instead hmm. of taking all those sort of words out, 
sometimes it just needs to go in just to to help the flow. Mm, get rid of quite interesting, yeah. And it's mm. totally against how I've, how I've written in the past where you try and see what you're seeing without being verbose and without, you know, using words that don't need to be there. Yes. Uh, but sometimes yeah. it just just you need to add a word just to keep keep it the sound good, if you like. Yeah, yeah. But then poetry is about words and it yeah, that's you know, right. if you, you take out too many words, you're not gonna have much poetry left, are you? So I think I think it's you know, the whole purpose of poetry is to to use all the words that you need, not too many, not too few. You yeah, know? that's right. Um, and just so that it does have that rhythm, so that it does, you know, roll off the tongue, as it were, when you're when you're reciting it or when people are reading it in their minds. So that it it has a a rhythm and a beat and a flow, as you say, so that it it does convey what you're trying to make it convey. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. The as an art form, I think it's 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 totally different from the writing that I've done. But mm. it's, uh, I do, I do. I must admit, I do enjoy it. Yeah, and are you are you going to be writing more poems on the the writing that you've done beforehand, the the non poetry writing? Are you going to use those as inspiration as well? Yeah, well, I do. I do uh, sort of dip back into them uh, mm. for. Uh, poems and I have a few in the back burner that that haven't quite come out yet but uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they will and it's just a case of I, 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 I've got them and uh, some of the, some have started as poems and just not get quite round to, to finishing them off mm. uh, so it's always nice to have something that you can uh, go to uh, yes. when, when you have that blank canvas uh, and you can go yeah. and sort of revisit. So, yeah, I've got, I've got a few from uh, just years of being in the hills and uh, sort of keeping uh, sometimes quite lengthy stories and mm. it gives you, it can trigger memories from those days. Yeah. So, Yeah. Mm. And that, that's another similarity to art, because I think a lot of painters will have several paintings on the go at any one time. And, you know, maybe they're not quite sure where to go with one. So they leave it, move on to another one and, right. and then come back to it later on. So and some, some of them just flow, you know, you, you start it and it just works and it just flows through to the end. But, you know, so, you know, very similar to poetry. Sometimes it'll just happen. And other times, like you're saying, you just go back to it after a while and and see you know what it needs now you know and, and i suppose as well with you know when you go back to it you could be in a different mood as well so it, it, you yeah, may get right. a different take on it as well yeah aye, that's yeah. right aye, that's right i think what yeah. what's happening in your life sometimes comes into your poems or it, it may even come into your art you know because mm. if you're you're if you're an up it's it might be you know a, a show in the the po in yeah. the the painting, or if you're if you're maybe down or there's you know there's some stressors mm. in your life, it might actually come through in the painting as well. Yeah, I would imagine yeah. that's the case. Yeah, there's quite a few famous painters who who went through periods like that, but like Picasso and his blue period and things, where right. events in their life had changed the way that they were painting and changed their oh, whole right. outlook on their art. And right. sometimes they would then move on again to something different. And sometimes it would just, you know, carry on as a, a changed sort of style. So, yeah, certainly so many similarities there. But, um, yeah, yeah I, I, I try to have my paintings um, with a, a calm and tranquil sort of, um, you know, atmosphere to them because yeah that that's what you know I like to look at it you know when we're all a bit stressed in this world and you just sit there and sort of look at it and just sort of ah oh, you know and feel I like you can, you, you can almost step in and be there hopefully and and yeah, relax. That's right. and you know it, it doesn't mean I don't like paintings that are more energetic or vibrant at times as well but with my own ones and and it's not even necessarily trying to make them like that quite often. They just 
come out like that. So it's, yeah. it's obviously something, you know, within me when I'm working on them that just seems to flow through. So, yeah, and it's it's lovely when someone picks up on that. And, yeah. you know, I've had people in the past say to me, you know, but your work's all so lovely and calm and tranquil, you know, and I just think that's that's great because it's... That's a compliment. You know, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, so what's on your agenda next, Martin, for your poetry? What's, have you got any more competitions coming up or anything? Uh, not, not particularly. Uh, I'll just try and work on... Uh, these poems I've got sitting, and mm. uh, if it, I quite, I, I when I started doing the poems, I uh, I started getting that uh, one of the, the writers' magazines, and they've got monthly poem competitions, and I so I oh. quite often will put put a poem into that competition, and it's just mm. again it's. It's a, it, it gives you a, a subject to try and find a poem to write about. And mm. uh, so uh, that, that keeps me sort of competitive. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, good. So, yeah. Uh, oh, but I've nothing, I've nothing on the pipeline other than that. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I get a little message in due course saying, has anybody chosen this painting yet? <laughs> That's, right. That's what well, happened with Sea Green, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll definitely have a look and see if us, if anything, uh, sort of is available that that I fancy. Yeah. Uh, it, it, need, it needs to resonate with you as well if you're going to write yeah, that's poetry right. about it, and it's got to mean yeah, something right. to you. So yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be I good. certainly enjoyed Sea Green. That was that was a nice uh, painting to. To write about. So please, thank you. And a lovely poem that you've written about it. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, all right. So we're just about at our time. So let me just put us back so that we can, people can see us a bit more. So um, it's been absolutely great having you back on the show, Martin. Really appreciate it. And uh, many thanks for not only writing your poem but also sharing it with us as well that was lovely and hopefully you'll let me have a, a copy of it to post on my Facebook page that people can read it as well because so we had just about two or three little network glitches so I don't think we missed any words but it sort of right. sort of hung and then it oh, went quickly just yeah. for a minute so right. I, I, but, yeah I'll get a copy know, to you that would be lovely and then people can read it you know in yep. full again that would be brilliant so uh, I hope you'll come back again very soon. Join me for another session on the poetry of painting. That would be great. And lovely. And uh, so next week, I'm going to be back with another fabulous poet coming to join me for more talk about poetry and painting. So I hope you'll all be able to join me for that. Uh, it's going to be a slight change. I'm going to move the timing from six o'clock to seven o'clock. That's UK time. Um, but here in the same place on Facebook. So uh, don't forget, you can sign up to my VIP mailing list to see new paintings before they go on social media and whatever, and to get invitations to events um, by signing up to my newsletter. So stay safe, everybody. Have a brilliant week ahead and see you a week on Wednesday for another Poetry of Painting session. So bye for now from Martin and myself. Bye for now. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. bye.